We have to keep quiet. We can already smell the smells of a pig farm. I'll take you all inside to see what's going on here. But they look injured, like they can't get back up. They don't know the fate that awaits them. Any one of these individuals in these pens could end up on your dinner plate. Okay, so we're back in the car again and We've now been to back-to-back -back farms and uh, beginning to feel a bit tired and a bit overwhelmed with what we've seen so far. I think showing these farms back-to-back -back gives people a very good idea that these aren't isolated incidences. Even the farms that look a little better, you can still see that the animals are imprisoned and they're suffering and they all end up at the slaughterhouse. So I'm not sure what we're gonna uncover here tonight, but I'm pretty sure it will be quite similar to what we've seen. So again, we're making this series to show you guys what you support if you're buying animal products and we're asking you to stop funding these places. That's the whole idea. So please choose vegan and we'll show you what happens inside this next farm. Okay, so we're just waiting for the all clear to head into this next farm. We can already smell the smells of a big farm and we can hear the big screaming as well. So I'll take you all inside to see what's going on here, to see what the pork industry is really like. Okay, so we have to be extremely quiet at this uh, farm. Uh, farmhouse is not too far away. But in the other episodes, we showed you the breeding of the pigs, uh, the farrowing crates and the piglets. And in here are actually the wieners. So when they've been taken out of the farrowing crates, they go to the first stage of growing. And this is what this shed looks like. They look quite small, um, but we're gonna show you around here and have a look. What I'm doing when I'm walking through is I'm just scanning for pigs. Sometimes they have injuries. Sometimes there's dead pigs in the pens. So we're gonna have a look through. Oh my God. Hello, darling. The pigs all have little water taps that they drink out of. They know what how to turn on and drink out of. The water drips through when they apply pressure, I think. Hello, babies. They're like little puppy dogs, aren't they? So they have this environmental enrichment, which is a, a wood on a chain. We've seen it in the farrowing sheds the other night, but it's it's absolute joke. Look at this pen. Nine wieners in a metre and a half squared. They're in a tiny prison here. You know what I mean? Look at them, they're all, all crouched up together. At least the farmer's cleaning the crap out of here but all the crap dump, they're, they're just above their shit. So it all falls down into this uh, sort of mesh down here. Yeah, so it's incredibly humid in here. They've got some humidifier or something pumping and that's why the, the lens is fogging up. I don't know why they do that. If anyone knows, let me know, but their towels have been docked as well. They dock their towels when they're piglets. Also clip down their teeth. If you actually look a little closer, you'll see that they're crammed in a prison, you know, with each other, scratching and fighting and they have no space, they have to all poo and wee through those grates. To determine whether or not something is humane, first ask if you'd want it done to yourself. Could you imagine living like this? So there are multiple sheds here side by side filled with wieners like this. We're gonna go through all of them and check out their condition. Little wiener here, I don't know what's the matter with him or her, but they look injured like they can't get back up. What's the matter with his head? The piglet can't keep their head up. Um, it's very bizarre. His leg. Yeah, so this little piglet here has got some type of neurological disorder or head injury or something like that. Can't keep their head up straight, can't walk around without falling over. Incredibly sad, like no vet care for this being. They'll probably try to raise this pig, raise them to slaughter weight because all they care at the end of the day is stealing the flesh from their bones. So they'll just let this pig go ahead like this. If they survive, they'll just sell them to the slaughterhouse to chop up into pieces. So. They don't care about these animals, like, this is just cruel. Okay, we're in shed two now. Look at this. So as you can see, there's so many wieners in here that they're defecating on each other and have to live in it. It's just gross that they have, that their toilet is literally underneath them, you know? The pigs look a little bit dirtier, especially in this pen here. They've got feces all over their faces. It's also interesting patterns on this pig here, spotty. I don't think I've seen a pig looks quite like that in with the pink pigs. They're so beautiful, these little babies, it's so sad. Yeah, there's a black pig in here as well with the pink ones. Beautiful angel. <laughs> okay, so we're in shed number three now, they're back to back. Again, they're cramped in here. There's over a hundred in here. Um, 
They've got scratches all over their backs from climbing on the top of each other. So I just want to do a little test for you in your mind. I want you to imagine that these are actually dogs in here and there's nine dogs per pen and they're defecating and urinating below each themselves and there's 120 dogs in a shed and there's multiple sheds here. How would you feel if this was a puppy farm? The mother uh, dogs are in there with their puppies feeding off of them and then they, the, their puppies get taken away and put in here and then fattened up and sent to the slaughterhouse. You'd probably be protesting out the front of it, wouldn't you? People who would be opposed to a dog breeding facility that also slaughter dogs support places like these and, and eat out of places like these and eat these beautiful intelligent beings who are much like dogs and uh, people have no problem eating them. It's because they've been conditioned to eat them They've been culturally programmed to think of pork and bacon as food. They're disconnected from the animal. They have no idea what goes on in these facilities. They're hidden away. These industries are in complete secrecy and for a reason because a lot of the public probably wouldn't buy these products or eat these products if they walked through and did a tour of these farms. So this pig here has got what looks like a big sore on the side of his or her body. It looks almost infected. There's feces all underneath their stomach, scratches all over them. Although I will say that I've seen a lot worse. Just because something's worse than this, that doesn't make this good. Okay, let's move on to the next. Lots of mice in here. I understand why the mice are in here. There's feces and stuff everywhere and there's also food in here, so the mice are attracted to that. There's also this, which is incredibly cruel. And yeah, I'd love to, uh, throw that out the window but we don't want to leave a trace that we've been here. These ones have got some company but too much company. This one here is in solitary confinement by themselves. Sometimes they separate pigs when they're a bit sick. Why are you by yourself? Are you sick? It's just more feces all over themselves isn't it? Pooing on themselves. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to each of the other sheds there. There's some mothers over there too. There's a fattening shed over there. We're going to check those out as well. They're a lot dirtier out here, but this is where they're getting uh, fattened and finished, ready for slaughter, so they're nearly ready to get carted off to their death. So as you can see, they, they have to go to the toilet in the same pen that they sleep in. So they've got feces all over them and pigs don't like to defecate where they sleep. They like to, to go to the toilet far away from where they sleep, but they have no choice here. They're at different stages of growth in each pen. It's like the, some of the wieners from out of those wiener sheds have been moved here and that they're a bit smaller and these ones are a bit bigger. Um, but they're sick, but around five to six months old when they go to the gas chamber. The majority of pigs here are killed in gas chambers. Uh, they don't know the fate that awaits them, but it's horrible. Gas chambers are horrible. Okay, so we're in another shed here. Um, these have got older animals in there. There's a lot inside these pens. They all woke up at once. They all woke up at once. Hello. Hello. They've got these marks on their back, uh, spray paint. It's like they've been marked for slaughter or something. I'm not sure what the different color codes mean for the spray paint, but. This must be where they get finished off. They are really big. Hello, darling. Not long from now, these pigs will be going to slaughter. Again, it's like this, a similar situation to the other pens. They're just crammed in here. These babies, no matter how badly they're treated by human beings, like kept in their own feces and exploited, they're still very curious and friendly. They're just, they don't know any better. They're just innocent beings. They're like, if you ever interact with a pig, you'll see how childlike and intelligent and innocent they are, you know? They're like big pink puppies. They're one of the most abused animals on earth. You can hear them screaming because they don't like to be confined, but it's all they've ever known, isn't it? So They're fighting a bit. she down? She chilling. They don't see grass. They're on wooden slats. Pool underneath them. Surrounded by concrete. Dark, cold shed. Like, this is British bacon, you know what I mean? They'll probably advertise it with green pastures and oh, amazing high welfare British pork. Living in your own feces on a wooden slat in a cold, damp, concrete shed. How is that high welfare? 
And also, even if it was, even if they were around the grass and, you know, nuzzling and nesting, it would not be acceptable morally if they have to go to the gas chamber to get chopped up into pieces anyway, so. But what we're trying to do is show you that this is British farming, you know. All right, we're going to go check out the other sheds now. It's just sad that these pigs are on their way to Slaughterhouse. All right, so this is a filthy, disease-ridden, putrid, feces-covered hellhole. It disgusts me to see these animals in here. And if it disgusts you, then maybe you should look on your dinner plate because you're paying for these places to exist. The only reason that these animals are living like this and have to suffer to death in a gas chamber is because of the consumer. When I realized that, I changed. When are you gonna change? These poor babies, look at them. Any one of these individuals, if you're in the UK right now, any one of these individuals in these pens could end up on your dinner plate. Someone that had a consciousness, emotions, they felt pain, suffering, warmth, cold, joy. These pigs, I don't think, experience much joy, but they have the capacity to experience joy. Intelligent beings, you're eating their body parts. You know, they live in their own feces. They die in their own blood in fear. So sickening to think about it. Like, I used to eat pigs myself. I feel incredible shame about it and it disgusts me to think I had their body parts in my mouth. Um. They're so terrified of a voice, aren't they? See? See, look. Okay, so let's have a look at what's in their food here. Oh my God. It's beyond comprehension. I feel so sorry for them. 